Bush will go to victory lane. Cause I'm a lone life. is not open yet and I, I gotta tell you he's not happy with Kurt Busch he's coming right up behind him first trying to use the pace car as a safety shield now remember these guys had some history before they've had contact several times throughout the course of the year so far Mike's not uh, looked over that way it looks like he may be trying to get ready to go into a uh, pit lane and yes now he does break off and let's go back and take another look, BP. Trucks come off turn four. Mike gets a little bit out of shape right there. And all of a sudden, right there is the contact. And Mike goes up and he goes around. Now he nails the gas, trying to keep this thing from backing in the fence. But it does make a complete loop, goes up, and the front is going to make contact right there. But I'll tell you what, if he doesn't get on the throttle there, he hits that wall very hard very hard he did a great job and mike we knew that the uh, 50 truck earlier had loosened you up we knew the 99 was starting to do that but you didn't expect contact did you it wasn't uh, how do you get loose in the middle of the straightaway I, mean, I wouldn't loose up off the corner i drove the thing straight past the start finish line and got turned around i mean i don't think that has nothing to do with chassis that uh that's just a very unethical way to win a race and it's a shame i mean if they're you know they're having to win races and points race i mean we basically dominated this race all day you know, the 15 to 99 led a few laps, but predominantly we led the whole thing, and we got taken out. It has nothing to do with chassis. It just has something to do with the driver that just drove in the back of somebody. That's the way he deserves it, wants to win. That's no problem. We're going to Texas, and we're going to California. Back. Well, moments ago, through the trial, will Kurt Busch and Dale Earnhardt exchanged greetings. See that as his crew looked on. They've been looking at that for years. Oh, yeah, they think, they think the old man's cool. They think that's cool stuff to do. Got to kick out Earnhardt's turn signal there. 1964. Busy, busy. Oh, Kurt Busch, Rusty Wallace. Uh, and no others. Everybody else dodges. Right, Three wide that, didn't work too good. No, it never does at Martinsville. That's what happens here with Rusty. Rusty kind of slides up. And they just tried making it three wide. Just, he can't yeah. fault anybody there. No. Here's what put us onto the 14th caution of the race. Car trying to take off is a 97 of Kurt Busch, right along with Kevin Harvick as he dives down and goes to the inside. See, he, see Schrader there on the inside. He, he got away with it. Race car weighs, what, 3,400 pounds? It's not easy to pop a wheelie. No. no. <laughs> Yikes. And ouch. Kurt Busch, kind of the meat in the race car that's sandwich. That's 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 take off, then the style points for taking air, too. Here it comes down pit road, and around he goes. And see all the, oh, see the fluid on the right there. rear tire? Well, the official got that guy out of the way. Atta boy, look at all that fluid he's putting down. Mm -hmm. Then uh, and not when everybody was pitting race cars.
We got to change the lead right here. Jimmy Spencer, he's out on the bottom of the racetrack right here. They got Hermie Sadler out there, number two car. The lead oh, right break him getting the corner right here, Daryl. Right around the bottom. Got to let him go. Got to fall in behind him, try to pass him back down here somewhere. Clear, clear. Come back under him sometime, but just let him go right now. Whoa, he hit him. Go. Bush got under him and muscled Jimmy Spencer. You don't see that often. Spence is hanging on for dear life. Get it up, get it up, you're right. Outside, outside. Now, big save, outside. Spencer. Message received. Here it is again. Like I said, get back up under him, man. Uh, there he goes. Many guys will save a car like that. Ooh, a bumper for a bumper. And not many guys would go up against Jimmy Spencer like that. We look at the tail of the tape of today's matchup here. Jimmy Spencer weighing in at 230 pounds. Jimmy, I never forget. He never forgets against uh, Kurt Boom Boom Bush, who has a slight disadvantage when it comes to height and weight. Floats like a butterfly and stings <laughs> like a bee. Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, Elliot Sadler, Rusty Wallace, and now Kurt Busch is a first-time Winston Cup winner at Bristol. You have dreamed about this for a long time, my friend. Congratulations. You finally reached it. What's it feel like? This is unreal. This is absolutely unbelievable. I just have to thank the whole Jack Roush organization for making that swap, giving me Jimmy Fenning, Sean Parker, this whole group of guys. This was awesome. We had pitch strategy. I don't know why the eight pitted, and Jimmy Spencer forgot about what he did to me at Phoenix last year. This was an awesome run for Rubbermaid. Sharpie on the car, a million dollar offer. You can't get any better than this. This is Bristol. Hopefully you come back in the fall race and do a double at the Sharpie 500. I hear what happened between you and the winner, Kurt Busch? Oh, he just smashed in the back bumper of my target, for, uh, my target car, but uh, it had a big bullseye back there, and I guess he couldn't see too good, and he ends up winning the race that way. But. There's a lot of things you can and can't do, and one thing you can't do is just beat and bang with people and knock them up out of the way, especially racing for the lead. And, uh, you know, I, I, I notice a lot of guys don't do that, and they're, they're the Winston Cup champions, like myself and Gordon did earlier in the race, and I really admire him the way he raced me, and I raced him. And some guys have to learn. They just have to learn the hard way. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. Got a crash. It's Kurt Busch with a hard crash. That's too bad. He was flying. He was running very, very well. Looks like he might have tested that safer barrier one more time. He was in 17th place at the time of the accident. After starting the race back in 38th. Boy. He has pounded the wall with the left side of that Ford. And great news there. Oh, he's mad at somebody. Yes, he is. He's hot. angry at somebody. I think he's got his weapon. Oh, no, it's his hat. <laughs> he's going down and just tell somebody when they go by that he's angry. All right. Survey says. <laughs> Who is he racing with there? We're here, and it's a red car. Jimmy Spencer? Yeah. <laughs> he just booted him out of the way. Wow, that's not good. No. I mean, here you got a guy coming. Okay, he passed him clean. And you can see the car was slowing up in front of him. I don't think Kurt's going to let that one go over too easy. Well, Kurt Busch has just stepped out of the infield care center. Kurt, what do you think happened out there? Oh, uh, just been having troubles with turn three this weekend. In qualifying, we spun, and that put us in a bad position back there with the decrepit old has-beens, I guess. It's just been a tough way. I mean, when he calls out what he's going to do and then actually goes out there and does it, uh, I mean, I guess he's a never was is really the term that we need to bring up today. But uh, real unfortunate, we had the car to beat. We were going to the front. Rubbermaid, very sorry about it. We'll go back and work at it next week. I mean, it's, it's tough when you bump somebody at 100 miles an hour and then when they come back and bump at 200 miles an hour. So if, if that's the way that Jimmy Spencer is, we know how he is, and we're not going to play like that. in this business. See, I'm not very good at being bad. I was trying to flatten the seventh car fender and I got mine. I needed to be further forward on his car. And he just showed on TV and just missed by about an inch of being too, uh, not far enough forward.
Inches only count unless you're playing horseshoes and hand grenades. And I don't really want to play either with that clown. Kurt Busch and Jimmy Spencer kind of duked it out on the racetrack, and that flowed over to the post-race activities. Jimmy actually bumped the number 97 as they entered the garage area, and then sources tell me Jimmy got out of the car, approached Kurt Busch, and actually punched Kurt Busch. Authorities are looking into it, as is NASCAR. Kurt, we've seen the video. We've heard the audio. What were your intentions when you made contact with Jimmy Spencer at Michigan? I mean, what happened last week was an assault after the race and what had happened leading up to that in the past was I've got two wrecked race cars out of it and I don't respect Jimmy Spencer and therefore what happened over the audio but during the race and then after the race was because of the fact I don't respect him I never expected him to cross over that line and so with having two wrecked race cars that's why I don't respect him and then having everybody else in the field you know I respect everybody out there that's something I wouldn't do to anybody else except him and so the things that had happened afterwards obviously he was agitated he came up to my window and I'm not going to back down to him. I never thought he'd cross that line. So that's what happened. You know, what we've got to do now is, is move forward. And I chose to accept my probation and to help this thing move forward and put this behind us. And then what can happen in the future from this is I'm still going to be the aggressive driver on the track that wants to go to the front. But I don't want to wrinkle anybody's fenders doing it. I'm a guy that's, that's a clean racer and I know how to do it. What did happen in the garage area after the race? I think I stated what happened there. He came up, hit me in the rear. And then he came up to my window and punched me. Are the penalties enough to make this whole feud over with, do you think? I believe so. I mean, it, it's tough to say what's going to happen on his side. But on my side of it, with the probation, I think we can move forward. We're going to accept it with grace, and with dignity, and show the honesty that I have within my organization and to all these other competitors out here that I can drive my race car under control and, and hopefully put on a good show doing it. I know Ricky Craven liked it. I know Johnny Benson did last year racing him. Just going for wins. That's what it's about. Can you put this behind you and win tonight, Kurt? We're going for it. I mean, we put a lap down at qualifying to be fifth on the board and just trying to make sure that we do one thing at a time this weekend. And now it's one lap at a time. You got to stay ahead at this track. You've got to make sure that you give the crew chief the right adjustments and then he makes the right calls to give us the right tires and right fuel. We'll see what we can get. I'm happy to be here and I'm looking to put this behind me. He won here in March going for the season sweep at Bristol, Bill. And a lot of people are about to go. Oh, turn one, Sterling Marlin has crashed. Second place car. And the caution flag is out. Man, this is unbelievable. I don't think the TV show Survivor's got anything on these guys. No. This could be the last one running tonight. Sterling Marlin was running second when he went off into turn one. Uh-oh. He's going to get some help from Kurt Busch. I did. And I'll tell you what, when you get hit going into a corner, that's there's not a whole lot you can do. That's the worst. Watch here as he goes down at turn one. Gets in the back of Sterling. When you're turning down into the racetrack, goes, and you're, you're all, already loose, get in. All around. I'll tell you what, there's not a whole lot you can do to save it. Final corner. And we'll see what kind of reception he gets in victory lane. It's checkered flag number four for 2003. Kurt Busch takes the Sharpie 500 at Bristol. And here he comes. Let's listen. Kurt Busch, the winner of the Sharpie 500.
we talked first thing on Friday when you got here. I'm sure this conversation is a lot more pleasant. Congratulations on your Bristol sweep. Thank you, Bill. It, I can't mention any of my sponsors or any of my, any of my people or anything before I apologize for Sterling Marlin. I got into him, and it was a place where he was trying to let me go, and I was trying to get into one and set him up and get underneath him out of two. So apologize to Sterling. I didn't mean to do that, and that somewhat overshadows this. Obviously, the probation does, but... This was a night for Sharpie. They, they had signed on for this race. This is their race. They're sponsors of this for three more years, and I'm sponsoring this car. I want to race this car. I want to do anything that I can to help this team and get behind them and do what I've got to do to be competitive. How tough was this week? This is by far the biggest win. I don't know whether to enjoy it, what to do with it right now. This, this beats all of my wins. It's so sweet to come here with all the, the hype and all the, the things that were going on this week to drag me down, all the tabloids. The things that I, I was trying to stay focused on were the race car, and I think I got the job done there. Obviously, you heard the reception at driver introductions, a mixed reception here in victory lane, Kurt. Yeah, Dale Sr. told me I said, the guy that's got the most noise wins. You know, the, the crowd here will envelope you and circumference you and let you know how they feel, that's for sure. That's what Bristol's all about. And the group here, you know, there's a, a bunch of them that are screaming, there's a bunch of them that are crying. behind him in the 97 car that gets into the back of him. Now listen, that was totally uncalled for, and you can say, well, I was bump drafting, but you don't bump draft at Charlotte Motor Speedway going down into turn one. Set, what happened? I think the replay shows that uh, Kurt Busch got his head up as whatever, you know, I mean, I guess I got to take Kevin Harvick's, you know, road, but uh, I, I just don't understand what, I mean, you, you got to finish the race to do, to do anything, and uh, he wrecked us on the straightaway. I mean, not in the corner, not going in the corner, on the straightaway. I never lifted on the gas, you know. I mean, he had more motor than I did, you know, because he's higher in points. But uh, I feel bad for these guys. Really good car. We're going to the front. Uh, I felt that we had a chance at a million dollars tonight for sure. Uh, we took out the whole field. Kurt Busch took out the whole field. And two really good cars had a chance at a million dollars tonight. Uh, if I was Jack Roush, I don't know what I'd do. But your teammate, Greg Biffle, not happy. He said you wrecked him on the straightaway. Your version of it. Yeah, he got a run on the 17 coming out of four. I just wanted to help him usher down the straightaway. But the way our noses are pinned and the tails are up with the stiff rear springs, my car lifted his instead of helping push him. Just an all-star type bump where you just wanted to try to help him. And he's a teammate of mine. I didn't mean to wreck him. And I apologize for all the wrecked race cars out on pit road. How disappointing is this for you, Kurt? We talked about, you know, all the excitement just before the race. Your thoughts now? I got to get myself in check, I guess. I mean, we're only 12 laps in, and I've got a wrecked race car. Last week, we had the fastest car out on the track, and we had to put it in a trailer after the race without a good finish. We just we need a finish. I guess the 97 uh, got in the back of the 16, which doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, I think he's caused a couple of them here in the all-star races so far. I know he spun me a couple years ago, so I was just disappointed I didn't get to him before he got somebody else. Behind trouble, big wreck. Whoa, Biffle. Greg Biffle in the 16 car. Right in the middle of your screen, here it comes. Ooh, he got turned on the straightaway. Yes, he did. Ooh. That was Kurt Busch. I believe Kurt, Kurt Busch. Behind him. I believe Kurt Busch may have lifted him up. It's pretty obvious that Kurt Busch got in the back of somebody, and that somebody is Greg Biffle, who is okay, but his car is junk. Oh, friend Nicole, of that's Greg Biffle, talking to Eva. Yeah, this is Eva Braun. That's Kurt's fiance, and this is uh, Greg Biffle's girlfriend right there. And it, it looks to me like she was really upset. That's, there's no words that you don't have to explain that one. Uh, that's, that's one of those things that you have you cannot do on a super speedway on these speeds. It's, it's, it's a form of right there, kind of like. Well, the only excuse I could make there is Biffle was down Fine. and he moved up in front of him. And Kurt probably should have been on his toes a little bit better. You know, Kurt had a little bit of a run. I was trying to get by the lap car and I moved up uh, in front of him and, and, you know, clearly was in front of him. 
and he didn't want to let off the gas, just run into the back of me and just turn me into the fence, you know. Um, he needed to check out of the throttle a little bit. That's the way, you know, give and take out there. But uh, he didn't want to do it, you know, didn't want to give and take. And, you know, if he doesn't want to give and take on the racetrack. I won't give and take on the racetrack. But, you know, uh, you know, I could have got an opportunity to probably do that to him yesterday and, and uh, felt like that that wasn't the thing to do. And just hate for all the guys in the subway car. Uh, you don't get taken out of this race. Uh, we had a really good car and would like to get up there and race with Casey, but uh, we'll just have to wait for Phoenix. Tony Stewart. Uh -oh. trouble. Scott Graves, the 10 car, around he goes. A lot of guys behind him. Oh, 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 oh man, that was close. Caution is out. Rich rolls away. I guess Kurt Busch is, I don't know. Kurt Busch, the 97 car, was around the 10. I don't know if he was the one that Scott was talking about was underneath him or not. Let's take a look from Harvick's car, see what he saw. Looks like Oops. 97 uh, ran up into him. You think? Looked like the 97 That's the way got, I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Looked like the 97 got loose, and when he corrected, just ran up right in the side of the 10 car. Well, look at that slide there on oh, the 10 car. And the 97 the car, car the oh. Bush in the wall, the defending series champion. Caution is out at New Hampshire. One down already. Oh, my goodness. But last year, I said, I think you can have one mulligan in the 10 race. the garage. And we can see the water from under the car, so the radiator is broken. He's going to have to go to the garage, replace the radiator, and get some of the sheet metal from around the tires. Well, I mean, he's going to finish probably 40-something in points, even if he gets the car fixed and comes back out. So it's, uh, this is one of those situations. You, you're starting off being in the hole. You know, your first race, and you're already in the hole. And that's, boy, that hole is deep to climb out of in ten and nine more races. It looked like the 10 car, Scott Ricks, got loose. He and does. he got loose and he's trying to save it. And unfortunately, Kurt Busch was up on the high side and he got tagged and that was it. You had a feeling this track would be very slick. Well, it is. You know, there's there's no grip on the racetrack right now. The tire temperatures are, are cold. The tire pressures are down. So it is just like driving on ice until you get some heat in these tires and you get your pressures up. It's a hard place to drive, especially at the start of the race. On board with Jeff Burton as he goes down the corner, right behind the two cars. Riggs gets loose, goes up the hill trying to save his car, gets to the left rear of the 97. There's Kurt Busch already out of his car. And, and he's, headed, he's headed for pit road. Yep, he sure is. <laughs> Back in New Hampshire, Kurt Busch knocked out early. Kurt, on your way up pit road, where are you going? What's the message you want to deliver? I don't know who the crew chief of the 10 is, so I just want to talk to him a little bit. The 10 car, we've had issues in the past, and this isn't the place to repay somebody. Especially what's so involved here with this championship. Yeah, that's pretty big, isn't it? You can see he is delivering his message. What did he say? What did he say, Kurt? You know, the 10 just got into us. I think he just got loose. He had a great qualifying run. He's a car that uh, was on the bottom side. He needed to get more room to the guys on the top side. How difficult now, Kurt, using your mulligan up so early? Uh, you just got to come from behind. So we got to come from behind every race now. You can see from the damage on the car, a lot of fluid leaking from it. The Sharpie guy's already at work in the garage trying to rebuild this race car to get back out to get some points. Rodney, you've looked at the replay now a couple of times, talked to Scott on the radio. Was it just a matter of the car getting loose? Are there leftover feelings from the Indy contact with the 97? No, not, not any leftover feelings at all. Just uh, racetrack's real green, rain last night. This place just really slick after it rains. And, uh, just stuck down on the bottom, and there ain't much you can do except for wait for a hole and try to get up. So, feel bad for those guys. Uh, you know, it wasn't anything trying to get him back. You know, when Kurt got into us at Indy, you know, he just got loose. It was a mistake, an accident. You know, we forgave him, and uh, 
today was just an accident, so hopefully uh, he'll forgive us, forget about this deal, and uh, just go on. Later, he was cited for reckless driving before the Fall Phoenix race and was fired by Roush Fenway Racing, leaving him without a ride for the final two races of the year. Your reaction to being taken out of the 97 car here today? Yeah, obviously I'm upset. It's tough. Um, you know, I'm a race car driver. There's a race today, and I'd love to be in the race. Uh, my, my crew, Jimmy Fenning, I have to thank them for what they gave me. Man, it's just unfortunate. Kenseth is easy into the corner and quick on the throttle. Bush to get to go his bumper. And, and there. there. There he goes. Into 29, Kevin Harvick's going to go by him as well. It's not over. Yeah, but there's no question about what happened there. I mean, the, the 29 was coming, and uh, the 29 is still coming. And here comes the 29. Can he get to him? We're still oh, green. Still green. Still green. Still green. Bush wins it. Woo! His 15th career victory, seventh on a short track, boot scoot. And boogie. Matt did a whale of a job not to spin that sucker out. But now he's frustrated. Rightfully so. Ever so slightly. Goodness gracious, it didn't even put a scratch on the two car. Hey, we had to muscle past Kenseth, and uh, he's a good friend of mine. Sorry, Matt. I think he'll be okay with it next week. You know, He knows that this is short track racing. He knows he slipped a little bit. He knows how hungry we were to win. Um, Kurt Steele, you know, I mean, we are great friends. We've always raced good together, and, uh, you know, he just knocked me out of the way. You know, I, I thought if he had a run under me uh, and had me beat, that would have been okay. But I had a better car. I could beat him off the corner. Uh, but he just drove in extra hard and knocked me out of the way. So I, I thought it was a little bit of a cheap shot, but I was Oh, no, he did turn. Stuffed him. Son of a gun. Stuffed I mean, him. stuffed him. The two, 24 hit the two going into turn three. He has turned him. Watch this. He ain't done either. Yeah, this ain't over. Yeah, down into turn the three here and see Jeff dive down in. Right rear. Gets into the left rear quarter panel. Kirk Bush didn't like that. And watch what happens next. Jeff Gordon from Lombard. I'm sure Kirk feels like that he didn't have enough up clear. there to be getting in there. He'll come back and give us a shot. Cross us over. Try to and over at us. Yep. Okay. Let's get to the two radio of Kurt Busch listening to his side of this. Yeah, check the damage on the nose, man. It sucked me right on in. I'm trying to let him go. <laughs> I'm going to turn to my championship driver and say, you buy that? <laughs> no, I'm not buying that. He wasn't trying to let anybody go. He got done exactly what he was trying to do right there. Pretty big payback for just getting knocked out of the way here at Martin. Well, that's what we've seen this year. That's what you said. That at the, the payback does not fit the initial crime. Well, I mean, it's a different racing, different styles. Everything's a little different. These guys now, you know, you get knocked out of the way, you come back. We've seen guys turn others and take them out, basically, instead of just knocking them out of the way and taking the spot back. Amendinger was sandwiched between Boris Said, who was tail end of the lead lap, and Kurt Busch, who was a lap down. He was in a no-win situation right there. Kurt was ready to go in this corner a little deeper. See, he bumps Almaninger, and you just you can't stop. AJ just trying to keep it straight. He was just in a bad spot, unfortunately, for him. Kurt Bush was needing to go. I'm going to go plus this point to him. Yeah. It's all right. We're going to yell because I'm going to put that point to you so far up on the fucking wall. It's going to be unbelievable. In turn three, a huge multi-car crash, and they are still piling in. There's Kenny Wallace down on the apron. Derek Colt, Jeremy Mayfield, Rusty Wallace. Among those involved, Rusty getting a push from Terry Labonte. Man, look at Kurt's car. Trying to get out of the grass there. Kurt Busch's car is well wrecked, and we are under caution. Let's see what happened over here. Yikes. Looked like it, uh, the 20 car made some contact with the 97 getting in the three over there. 
And boy, you can see the results. And Darrell, that happened down low. A lot of those cars were going high, but Kurt Busch went up the racetrack right there. That got about six or eight of them. Took a pretty hard lick, too. Looking down to the inside, just, just that not quite bit. enough, not quite enough room there, buddy. And up he comes. Riggs getting tipped down to the apron and, and everybody just swallowed up as those 33 degree bankings clean themselves of cars. They slide down into those who were trying to take evasive. Saw Kenny Wallace in the double zero car with that outside wall very hard. Remember, they just installed the safer barriers. And just remember, what goes up has to come down. And they go up, hit the wall, and then down the hill they come. Riding with Jeff Gordon, it all happens behind him. What's that? Yeah, the 97 wow. just gets turned, man. Crash in turn four. Man, and there in the midst of it sits Tony Stewart and Kurt Busch, the two leaders. I believe, I, I'm not sure, but I believe Tony got a little loose all at once. Kurt Busch, the two, will go straight to the garage, Jerry. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about that car. That was Greg Zipidelli, Stewart's crew chief. And the strongest Chevy and the strongest Dodge in Daytona are wrecked. Let's watch it. I don't know if Kurt got into the back of Tony or not. Let's wait till we get around here and see. Tony's car just, all, uh, Tony hit the apron. He got down on the apron. He got a little bit loose. Kurt was all over the back of him, and there he goes. Watch, watch the yellow line. Yeah, watch the left front tire. He gets it on the apron just a little bit. You see the car wiggle, and he gets loose. He's got to probably lift out of the throttle and tad. And here comes Kurt. Cannot get off of him. They make contact. And then once Tony gets sideways, nowhere for Kurt Busch, the two to go. What a shame. You're doing 185 miles an hour, Daryl. The car in front of you suddenly loses several miles an hour of momentum. Was there anything Kurt Busch could do to avoid Stewart? No, you could see he was trying to get down. He was trying to get underneath Tony to get away from me. It wasn't possible. He did everything he could do. We had a good run on the, the 20 car, bumped into him a little bit, and we both got taken out of the Daytona 500 off of uh, my mistake. So I hate it for my guys. They work real hard at putting together good cars, and our sponsor, Miller Lite, and everybody that's involved with the team. We're real, real poised for a good run towards the end here, and we just got bottled up, uh, a bunch of guys sliding around, and I made the first mistake. So I apologize to the 20 car. I know it doesn't help any. He's been a great friend at all these restrictor play races. So we'll, we'll dig out of this, and uh, we'll be back next week in California. A four-car jam session that we've been watching for a lap or two has ended up with Kurt Busch in the wall. In the number two, he was racing with Tony Stewart, Greg Biffle, and younger brother Kyle. That was, that was predictable. I mean, these guys were not cutting each other any slack, and they'd been doing it for a number of laps, and it was going to happen sooner or later. This was coming off turn four. Now, Tony had already passed Kurt a couple of times, and he passed him back, and this time he just didn't. Uh, Kurt tried to come up in front of Tony, and he said, we're not having any part of that. Yeah, there was not a lot of give and take right there. Not at all. Denny Hamlin in the midst of that as well. Isn't this about the third time, at least the third time this year, that those two cars, beginning at the Daytona 500, have crashed together? Here they are racing each other pretty hard. And you see Biff run in there and bump the back of Kurt. Now Kurt gets a run under the underneath Tony Stewart here, and he thinks he's probably got him cleared, or at least he needs some room up. Ain't gonna happen. So we we as we watched this, we almost knew that that was gonna be the result. Like you say, Daryl, they've been this these this group of four right there, they've been going at each other for several laps. And they were running great. I mean, they were running in the top ten. All those cars are, or were. Yes, from uh, from eighth place on back. As they're looking at the damage to Stewart's car, Kurt comes up to offer his opinion. Yeah. And guess what? They got the two car parked for the day. Meet me at the uh, Oval Office, please. Kurt, what happened on the racetrack and then on pit road? You know, uh, pit road was just me stopping there to make a point and only making the situation worse so that was my fault but out on the racetrack with tony you know we raced 10 15 laps side by side 
He didn't give an inch, and I was making sure that I stayed off of him because earlier in the day, he tried to wreck us at two restarts. So I'm not sure where he came from today. It's really confusing on that side of it. But he did get mission accomplished. He wrecked us, and I have no idea what it stems from. So tough day for us and our Miller Lite Dodge. Friday, NASCAR lowered the boom on Bush, docking him 100 driver points, 100 owner points, plus a $100,000 fine. The points dropped Bush from 11th to 17th in the standings. Today, Kurt Busch starts 27th, and Marty Snyder is with him. And, Bill, this has certainly been the big topic this week here at Pocono. First of all, Kurt, your reaction to the fine, was it fair, and did you think you'd be sitting at home this weekend? Well, you know, I regret my actions and what happened on Monday's race, and, you know, the incident was out on the track, not on pit road, and so... I didn't mean to jeopardize anybody's safety, and, and that's uh, something that I've talked to J.D. Gibbs and Coach Gibbs about, as well as Jason Lee, that crew guy. So, you know, the points and the money, it's what it is. We just need to work hard and gain some points back this week, and we've got the next 20 uh, some odd races to gain those points. What's been the reaction from the peers in the garage area? We're going to let you go be introduced. How about that? We need to go do that. All right. Yeah, you need to go do that. We'll catch you on the other side. How's that sound? Okay. Kurt Busch has to go be introduced because he's up next. Now let's go to Matt Yoakum, who's with Tony Stewart. Marty, owner Richard Petty has a long-standing rule against drivers racing against his teams. He goes, I don't mind if you beat up on each other, just don't beat up on my equipment. But what happened on pit road was into a whole different chapter when you throw a crew member involved. And talking things over your buddy Casey came with smoke, looking to what happened last week. Did the penalty fit the crime in the Bush incident? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Kurt's a good guy. I mean, um, you know, he's been catching a bunch of crap this week and it's heat of the moment and, and you know it it's still doesn't mean it was a good deal by any means it still was a bad deal but um, you know that's that's what makes him such a personality in this sport me too I mean I've done things worse than what he's done so uh, you know it's uh, you know, we all get through it, and we're back racing this week, and, and, you know, I'm glad he's still here. I mean, I know everybody, there were people that wanted him to be parked for a week, but, uh, you know, it, it. I think this week caught his attention a little bit. And, you know, it, like I said, I just, you know, maybe he got the picture that, that he's, you know, racing guys a little harder at wrong times of the race, and, you know, maybe this week gave him some time to think about it. And now Kurt Busch is done with his intro, so we'll finish our interview. And Tony just took up for you. That had to make you feel good. Where does your relationship with Tony stand right now? Seems pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we're okay with things. We're racers. We're both champions, and we both know what we had to do to get to this point in the sport, and we'll both move on from this. So we just need to give each other some more room out on the track, and, and things will be cool. You race for one of the most respected men in the garage area, Roger Penske. What did he have to say about all this? You know, we, we had some conference calls and had a lot of people in on it, and we're trying to put our arms around the, the problem exactly. And that stemmed from out on the track, and we don't need to, to compound the problem any, any further. So we're putting this behind us. We're moving forward, and he's got the team behind me 100%, and we've got 100 points to go gain, but yet we've got more to do that. More time is ahead of us, and we just need to get ourselves locked into chase, and we'll be all right. have a lot of similarities, but, oh, there's a car in trouble, the two, I think. Can't tell where it started. Something, I think he, he ran over something, though. Somebody got, yeah, he's got all kinds of problems. And the red flag oh, look, is look. out. He ran over somebody, knew he did, or somebody Ooh. ran over him. Don't do anything, don't, 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 don't worry about it. I know you want to, don't worry about it, it won't do us any good. Look at the right front on Bush's car. And remember, our last race of NASCAR on Fox, uh, we had this going on at Dover, Delaware between these two guys. Well, I know that... Uh, I know Kurt said he wasn't feeling well, but this isn't going to help him any. The thing I disagree with, totally, what a mess here. The thing I well, disagree, Kurt Busch took it out on the 20 car. The guys that work on that 20 car had nothing to do with what went on on the racetrack. I think Tony was trying to exit his car to go over and talk to him, but I think there's something and that... the season begins. Let's have a look here. Serious case of bump drafting that went bad, I think. Oh, Tony's trying to squeeze by on the outside right there. There's not enough room. And he gets into Kurt. That's what that's what Kurt's upset about. Last year, the Daytona 500, they had the two fastest cars. And two teammates tangled. Look at that, the 11 and the 20. There they go. And Stewart and Bush ended up in a big crash that took both of them out. And one or the other of them probably would have gone on to win the race absent that. Yeah, there just was not enough room left up there on the high side. 
Daryl, I'm not real sure good how your car's driving, but how about if we call tonight? <laughs>48, um, you know, we got run into at Sonoma. We got run into again. Uh, starting to lose faith in his ability to be a three-time champion on the track. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed. I gave him room, and we got pounded into the fence. And I uh, had a left rear tire rub. Luckily, we got a yellow, got her fixed, and uh, finished 17th. So a couple runs that were spoiled by the 48 car, so I'm not digging it. They were able to get those tires back on and able to finish it tonight. They do finish 17th, Matt. Go, but I don't know. I'd rather lose to any other 41 cars out there than this 48 car. I thought we had him beat. I gave it my heart today, but to come up short, it's all right. We did good at Bristol. I'm happy to have Steve Addington on my team. He's he's really making me believe the Bruce brothers can't drive. It's all about Steve Addington. So a great day for our Miller Lite Dodge. It's um, it's a shame we didn't bring it home for a victory. We're uh, we're really good here at Bristol. We're not so good at Martinsville. So hey, it's all right to finish third. Just pouring my heart out, trying to give it all I had to beat the 48 and then to lose to them. That's, that's what's most upsetting. But for, for all our season work so far, it's a good points day, and we'll take it with our Miller Lite Dodge. But it's just very upsetting. We just now have to uh, take up some of the slack on some of our tougher tracks, like Martinsville next week. We're going to watch 48 dominate all week, and I, I failed to bring home the two-car in victory lane this week to keep him out of victory lane. The guy's just too good. Jimmy Johnson outstanding in practice here yesterday. Whoa, Kurt Busch with contact, goes. the bump and run, new leader. The Blue Deuce out of the front. Johnson has won four times this year, including a week ago. 
two victories in 2010 for Bush. Repay, a little contact in the corner. <laughs> Same place. You just do it. And look, and look here. Look at the 14 right here in the mirror. Just hoping these guys pay, do it. Two laps to go. They're side by side at the stripe. Into one. Jimmy Johnson the advantage. But I tell you, Kurt's not giving an inch right here. Well, and this is really oh, hard right there because Jimmy couldn't make the pass and slide up in front of him. Now he clears him. Today, he does it in the Granite State. Johnson wins. Trouble. Kurt's into the wall. Boyer's in it as well. And Kurt's getting the worst of it. It's like a little bump drafting going on right there. We're trying to gain the advantage. Looks like the 48 got to the back of him a little bit. Boy, yeah. What happened? Got wrecked on the straightaway. How did it happen? Jimmy Johnson drove straight through us. And the white flag is up. There's one lap to go. Looks like Jimmy's going to get by Kurt Busch. Still side by side. Boy, the position that this will put Brad Keselowski in. He's inside the top 20 with this and then having two victories. He's, he's still got a long way to go, though. He's got to go through the tunnel turn and turn three. Yeah, but I like my chance with him. See Kurt Busch fighting back with Jimmy here. They touch coming down the back straightaway. That could get ugly. Uh, oh, yeah, it's getting ugly. It's getting ugly. Wow. That's a high-speed part of the racetrack to be doing that. Maybe a crossover move coming right here. Yep. Or into the rear bumper, one of the two. These two drivers still arguing over space. Yeah, Jimmy's going, hey. I suspect they'll discuss it when they come back around to the pit lane. Disagree. Well, now, this isn't the first time these drivers have had a disagreement about who ran into who. Crew members trying to intervene there and say, okay. Well, Vince? Well, certainly animated in uh, Jimmy. How about the conversation there with Kurt and what the message was you were trying to deliver? like a lot of yelling. Um, I mean, I worked him over for 10 or 15 laps and had the opportunity to screw him up in the center of the turn, had the opportunity to run him and run into him. Never did it. Never did it. And then off of two, um, he claims I turned down on him off of two, and I I don't have a clue. He ran over, the, ran over me on the corner exit, and uh, that's where it all started. So we'll figure it out. Throughout the course of the race, as you stalked him, did you feel like now in, the, in hindsight that maybe you should have handled it differently? No, I mean, I'm not going to run people over to pass them. That's just not me. And I, I've worked on him for however many laps trying to get by him clean, fair and square. And then uh, as I got next to him, you know, we had that issue up off too. So, uh, you know, I just keep following things away. You know, remember this stuff. Uh, there's a couple other guys out there that have been pushing the luck too. Jimmy Johnson frustrated at the finish, but a very good day today. Fourth place. Dave? From Kurt Busch, third place today. Hard fought, especially at the end. Your talks with Jimmy? We were fast on a fresh racetrack, and then we'd fade. Uh, racing hard with Jimmy at the end. Uh, I was racing him flat out. You want to race? Let's race. I didn't know we were supposed to pull over when it came down to five to go. Man, I raced him hard. Raced him smart. Raced him clean. And he wants to come over here and bitch about it. So, hey, he came off the turn and did a jab to me left. I did a jab back to the right. It's just just as clean as ever I've, as I've ever seen it. Why can't we race each other like this and put on a show for the fans and not have a problem with it? I don't know. Will this carry forward to the chase, Kurt? It always does with the 48 and the 22. Don't stick shots with me, Um, you know, he's good running his mouth. He can keep running. He said that you can't. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has had words with someone before. But when, when you're in that moment and you're having words with someone and as the crowd starts to build around, that guy all of a sudden gets brave. And then when you think it's over and you walk away and that guy gets real tough, I don't know about you, but that, that really makes me mad. And, uh, and bottom line, he just, he just started running his mouth. If you look at 
over the years and, and what his mouth has, has done for him. Um, you know, it, it got my biggest fan, Jimmy Spencer, to, uh, to punch him in the face. That's great. It means I'm in his head, and if, it's, uh, if I'm in his head, then he's got to worry about us running through this chase. My, my first option is not to tear up race cars. I have too much respect for the guys working on my race cars and too much respect for Roger Penske and his organization to, to take it out out there. So that's not my goal. That's not my objective. And, and I made zero contact with Kurt at Pocono until, you know, once he hit me, then I, I leaned on him back. But when I went to break the draft, I never touched him. And then he instigated the contact. So that's not my goal. Um, and then what he said, you were standing there. You heard it. He's, he, he said plenty. I, I think the line was when he swerved at us to say, I guess yesterday he said he was trying to break the draft. That's, that's not a move of a five-time champion. That's the move of a guy that um, has had an issue with a guy like me. We've raced each other hard, and I've been spun out and wrecked a few times, and we both know that uh, we look at each other very sternly, and that's, that's great competition. So that blends into rubbing his racing. When you have a history with a guy, you just don't forget about it. Uh, I learned from one of the greats about how to keep a memory on who does your right or who does your wrong, and that was Jimmy Spencer. He taught me a lot. The way that things are handled on the track <clears throat> sets the tone from there on out. And if, if it turns into wrecking cars, man, that's, that's the worst situation you can have going into the chase. Um, because as soon as that driver, if he is a chase driver, or if not, he, he holds all the power in all the cards. And at some point, he can just dump you. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's something other, if it's verbal, if it's a, a, a dislike situation between some drivers, and you just make it difficult on one another when, when you're around each other and, and shoot each other the bird on the straightaways, and it, it's fine. But when it turns into tearing up race cars, um, that's, that's the part that uh, no one wants to have happen, and things rarely get to that level. So. Johnson in trouble, Montoya also goes around. Caution number 10. Tomorrow you can start the roll. You can clear. Right, so that curtain just charged the corner a little bit too hard. Locked the front wheels up. Shot the front end straight up into the end. Trouble turn number two. It is Kurt Busch who's going around. Brought the caution flag out. Had another car. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Johnson. Oh, uh, well. Huh. Oh, uh, this will be an interesting picture. All uh, clear. Uh, not quite. A throttle good, huh? <laughs> I got your number. I don't know what happened there now. I think the both of you have had each other's number for a little while now. Now, when the chase starting between you and Kurt Busch? Well, I mean, just get right down to the point, really. Hopefully, you'll stop running into my race car and we'll, we'll, everything will be fine. <laughs>Tell you every time I'm up on the radio, I really don't know what's coming out of them. Oh, that's why I play it for them. I know. Okay, so we get in tune with the fans then. Yeah, that, I want the fans to know the realistic Kurt Busch. Here under caution, and here's why it involves Kurt Busch in the two. Yeah, look up high. Not sure what's going on there. If he had a right rear tire going down, or I mean, he was awfully high, but it didn't look like he was so high he was in the marbles. But uh, don't know. Now, obviously, the spin here, that brings out the caution. You'll see the light turn red, but Kurt had to come down pit road at that point anyway because he's going to need tires. Might as well dive on yeah. there and get them done because you're going to restart at the tail end of the longest line anyway. Dude, these cars are out of control. I can't believe how different they are with their tires. But we'll just keep running like you did before. I can't run up there, Roger. It's dead sideways, man. Caution is out. Oh. He hit the wall, but again, since yes. we talked last. Well, he said it was a handful. Yeah, something, oh, something definitely yeah. broke and went down there. Wow. He's just finishing it off there. It has been a difficult season for him. They had very high hopes for the former series champion.
a brand Make, new race car. Brand new race car and bring it all the way up to where. drives like shit. Uh-oh, excuse that right there, but uh, not very happy with his car right now. Apologize for his language. Exactly. But but in the heat of battle. Heat of battle right now. Track bar up at the air of the right rear. That was a stupid adjustment. Oh, we're proud of ourselves for that run. That was excellent. Yeah, our day's about shot now. You just do your best here. You're going to be fine, okay? There's no way we can compete. Well, all that we're doing is hanging on to a track position that was given to us. It's the most frustrating thing in the world to think that you think that we're better than what we are. Now, if you didn't blow yourself up, we'd be a lot better. I'll tell you that right now. I'm watching this thing, okay? You made a change. It didn't work. Said it's in. Okay, let's go back with it. All we hear is a bunch of stuff on the radio. So let's get serious here, okay? You understand? Oh, 10-4, dude. 10-4. Roger, we don't make any good adjustments during the race. If we started 39th, we'd be three laps down running about 35th. Do you understand that? I don't understand your thinking if you want to know the truth. Let's just drive this thing. Do the best you can. Everyone's trying, okay? Well, we don't need a lot of rhetoric that's always negative, okay? I know it's not perfect. The left front there, Kurt. Pound and a half there, right front. Pound left front, pound and a half right front. Sounds like it's dialed in. Okay, I'm the car owner, Greg. You listen to me, okay? Yeah, this is great. If you have a problem, you call me, let me know, but I don't need all the crap on the radio. Enough of it. Trouble up a turn four. Kurt Busch slammed the outside wall. There I got her handling just caught up with the this is the worst car I've ever driven. Fifty one hundred about fifty one hundred. I don't think we needed a fucking pit. Ten away. Five, four, three, two, one. Right here, gas only, guys. Come on, Steve-O. Go, 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 well, I can't see the right side from here, Pat. We're on the fucking back straightaway, fucking Einstein. Where the fuck did I pit? Fuck! This fucking shitbox will fucking turn every fucking week. Really, it was a fucking tire. Fuck these tires. We don't know how many fucking put on either. Four or two, nine, it don't fucking matter. This is four position. Whoa! Oh, and Bush, tackle the wall. And earlier this season, Bush's demeanor over the team radio was once again put in the spotlight after a meltdown during the spring Richmond race. Look like a monkey in a football. The fing Pinsky's a f***ing joke. F***ing everybody. Stay red close. Stay out here. Get close. What the f***ing car? Crash in the middle of the pit road with a f***ing horn all to pieces. Gotta be better on making adjustments during the race. I've never said that before. What the hell? Why 
You know, all drivers sometimes have a beef with certain media members or uh, different ones of the print or broadcast media. Uh, you know, things are reported, general speaking, and the vast majority of our journalists are hardworking, responsible individuals who, like us, are trying to do their jobs the best way that they can. And I appreciate that. I also appreciate the fact that until now, the media has been extremely professional in respecting the privacy of my personal situation with Eva and I. And although that uh, those in the NASCAR community have been aware for some time now about that we are no longer together and that we are legally separated, you know, while we go through this process, it's been tough, you know, and, and the upcoming weeks we'll work at uh, formally terminating our marriage. But, you know, we do so with the most respect for one another and we'll always be friends. Race cars where you can't touch the grass. That is crap. We're over eight now, too. These are the stupidest built race cars I've ever driven in my whole life. Thank you, NASCAR. You ruined my career. I am tired of being at the end of these other races. Boom. Come on! Well, we want the Pocono 400. This is the most pathetic racing I've ever seen. Have we ever thought about making our cars faster? Glad you got an in-car camera in here for me. Yeah. That's Fainter running up that high. You get loose, you got nowhere to catch the car. It's unbelievable. Tired of it. Strictly tired of it. Yeah, why don't you guys stand up on the wall and go through the hell like I go through every week? On vibration, brakes. Every week is something else. I'm not pissed until we're in the stands. It's just what he does. I mean, hell, he's threatening to fight Joe. He's threatening to fight Joe. So, I mean, interesting stuff. So, yes. Kurt said that he thought he's in your head. You'd been pretty good. I didn't say that tonight. You did? Not. Did not. Okay, I'll pull the transcript. Pull your Twitter. Where? Pull your Twitter. I, it's not on Twitter. Okay, Facebook. It's not on Facebook. All right. You said we're in his head. Absolutely. It was on TV. Okay. When he came back to us, you know, you could see it coming. So I know we're in his head. Thank you. At New Hampshire Motor Speedway, we've got 42 cars on the grid and one car in the penalty box. Jamie Little, what's going on with the 22? They did fail pre-race tech. Now, I asked Steve Addington, his crew chief, what exactly happened and to give it to us in layman's terms. Basically, he said the rear end housing of the car that's supposed to be straight was a little too much out. So what they have to do is adjust that, and they'll do it by a track bar adjustment to make it more square and legal. So they're waiting back there to get approval from NASCAR to be able to bring the 22 car out here on the starting grid. I'd be okay. I gotta go okay. get in my car. NASCAR told me I'm yeah. gonna get in my car. Kurt's not very happy right now. You heard it right there. Doesn't want to talk about it, but the good news for Kurt, he will start where he qualified in fifth. And as you heard, I mean, the car has been cleared through inspection, and he's walking back to it now because it's not down here in the spot where he'll start. And the owner of the 22 car, Roger Penske. He always watches the racers from atop the spotter stand, communicating with his driver, and he's going to talk to NASCAR's president, Mike Helton. If you've been following along, Kurt Busch's car was held, uh, failed pre-race inspection. It is now starting in the fifth spot, but it certainly is a developing story and something very interesting to follow for one of these chase drivers. Just uh, keep an eye on this 22. He's on full meltdown mode. Well, 22 just went ape shit. What are you talking about? I guess he went crazy sometime here in the last few minutes. All right, good cool. Hey, uh, Clint, word is that 22 driver had a slight meltdown in driver intros today. Meltdown in driver intros? Oh, I'm curious. What happened? They were put in the penalty box for a while and he freaked out about it. Hey, let's uh, get a good one here, Kurt. It's nice and cool here. We have a long way to go. 10-4. Well, for last in my life. This is awesome. They just have to be more high. I have no idea. Why do we think we're ready to win this case? We need to get 
ready to be out on stage in Vegas again. Got seven races to go here. Let's keep our head in this thing. We're going to do our best here. 180 laps to go. 10 4. Be positive. Come on again. Come on again. Kurt Busch goes to pit road. He is out of gas. Brilliant. Just brilliant. And Kurt Busch's difficulty is going to be compounded by a speeding penalty. Too fast entering. Yeah, I didn't have a fucking tachometer. Bring me out of fucking gas. Finally, at the series finale in Homestead, Bush made a gesture at a vehicle belonging to First Lady Michelle Obama in the garage area. He then had an exchange with ESPN's Jerry Punch while waiting to be interviewed for the broadcast, which was captured by a fan on video and eventually went viral on YouTube. Make that piece, man. You were in front of me. Uh, that, right that just makes me feel a lot better, doctor. Can you get this motherfucker out of my face? I'm not out of it yet. Speed Center special report. There is breaking news in the NASCAR world tonight. With Steve Burns, I'm Adam Alexander. And Adam, it is a bombshell. Kurt Busch, a former Sprint Cup Series champion and Penske Racing, have parted ways. And with that announcement earlier today, Roger Penske releasing this statement. While I am disappointed that Kurt will not be racing for our team in the future, both Kurt and I felt that separating at this time was best for all parties, including our team and sponsors. I wish Kurt the best in his future future racing endeavors. And then time now for us to welcome in Kurt Busch himself. He joins us on the phone from his home in Mooresville, North Carolina. Kurt, thanks for being with us on the show. No problem. Good to talk to you, gentlemen. You know, Kurt, when you and I spoke in Las Vegas last week on NASCAR Race Hub, we were talking about the things you were building on from the season past. Um, it, it seems like this would be a complete surprise to you. Is that correct? Well, no. I mean, the way that uh, we came to a mutual agreement, discussions were ongoing. Uh, obviously, out in Las Vegas to celebrate with Tony Stewart as our champion, there was uh, discussions, and behind the scenes, things were uh, things were developing. So, Kurt, given the fact that this was a mutual uh, agreement between you and, and Team Penske, what reason was given to you for the split once the announcement was made? Well, we both had our concerns, and with the way that. Um, I've worked with Roger in the past. It uh, it was it was clear and it was cut, and I, I'm very thankful for the years that I spent over there. We won a lot of races together, and you know what uh, what I did this past season. It wasn't just one moment. There were a bunch of unprofessional moments, and what were the reasons behind those? And I began working with a sports psychologist and seeing some of those reasons. And this now allows me for a fresh start. It's, uh, it's time to put, uh, put a little bit of fun back in racing for me. 
Uh, Kurt, this, in all reality, could not have come at a at a good time for a driver looking for a ride. I mean, there, honestly, there aren't that many rides. Where do you go from here? What what? I know it's early in the game, but do you have any opp opportunities as we head into 2012? Well, I'm, I'm considering all options, and I'm encouraged by the quality phone calls today, texts, and, and other ways. It's um. It's important for me to work on my issues and the way that uh, I want to be a better person and a better driver. And, you know, as I reflect back on it, uh, maybe I wasn't the best fit for the Penske Racing Team. And you know, at times, my frankness and intensity maybe just didn't lay well. And I'm just a regular guy, and I wear my heart on my sleeve. And I think everybody knows that, and that's really... Uh, some of the decision that went into everything back and forth. We all make mistakes, no question about it. And, and certainly, Kurt, you were taking steps to get those mistakes that you have made corrected. You mentioned the fact that you've hired a sports psychologist. How is that going? And what other things are in your future to try and get this anger management under control? Oh, it's definitely working at it and taking the right steps to make sure that I find progress and achieve those uh, small moments and recognize uh, you know, which, which ways I need to channel my emotion and my passion that have made me successful on track. And it's time to do that uh, in, in, in other areas. So I'm excited about the future. I mean, this is a fresh start for me. I've got uh, Champions Provisional that will guarantee me a spot in any race that I want to go to. Uh, there's, there's all types of other racing options. So it's, uh, it's been a unique day. Uh, and it's going to be a unique week and month to figure out uh, the next direction. Kurt, you just mentioned that you may not have been a good fit at Penske. Why, why did you come to that conclusion? or Why, why do you think that? I, I think the way that um, there, there was the formality of processes that uh, maybe even Pat Trison or Steve Addington didn't, uh, didn't necessarily smooth into as well. Uh, it was tough to enjoy those. And so it's, uh, it's still, though, a great program. I, I can't thank Roger enough. Those guys were, were so caring, and they still are, and that bridge is still there. But it's, it's time for me to put fun back into my racing. You're a championship driver, and so I've got to believe from a common sense standpoint that there are opportunities that lie ahead on track. But, Kurt, have you thought at all about the possibility of a Sprint Cup race going on in 2012 without you participating? No, I haven't thought about that. Uh, there's, there's plenty of options. I've got uh, unique situations here, there. I've also got uh, my problems that I need to fix and to prove that, uh, that I'm moving forward. So lots of, lots of good things are brewing, and I just want to, to say that I'm looking for a fresh start. Well, Kurt, uh, thanks very much for your time and your uh, uh, honesty, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks. No, good to talk to you guys. Thanks, Thank you. Kurt. Yeah. 